www.libertarianparty.au. Now, one of the principal achievements of this country in the past 20 years particularly, I think most people agree, is the gradual growth of social protective legislation based on the principle that we are our brother's keepers. How do you feel about the political trends of the United States, the uh, Western world? The way everybody feels, except more consciously. I feel that it is terrible, that you see destruction all around you, and that you are moving toward disaster until and unless all those welfare state conceptions have been reversed and rejected. It is precisely these trends which are bringing the world to disaster because we are now moving towards complete collectivism or socialism uh, a system under which everybody is enslaved to everybody and we are moving that way only because of our altruist morality oh, yes but you say everybody is enslaved to everybody yet this came about democratically i and the free people in a free country voted for this kind of government wanted this kind of legislation do you object to the democratic process? I object to the idea that people have the right to vote on everything. The uh, traditional American system was a system based on the idea that majority will prevail only in public or political affairs, and that it was limited by inalienable individual rights. Uh -huh. Therefore, I do not believe that a majority can vote a man's life or property or freedom away from him. And therefore, I do not believe that if a majority votes on any issue, that this makes the issue right. It doesn't. All right. Then how do we arrive at action? How should we arrive at action? By voluntary consent, voluntary cooperation of free men, unforced. And how do our leaders arrive? How do we arrive at our leadership? Who elects? Who appoints? Uh, the whole people elects. Uh, there is nothing wrong with the democratic process in politics. Uh, we arrived at it the way we arrived by the American Constitution as it used to be. By the constitutional process as we had it, uh, people elect officials, but the powers of those officials, the powers of government are strictly limited. They will have no right to initiate force or compulsion against any citizen except a criminal. Uh, those who have initiated force will be punished by force, and that is the only proper function of government. What we would not permit is the government to initiate force against people who have hurt no one, who have not forced anyone. We would not give the government or the majority or any minority the right to take the life or the property of others. That was the original American system. When you say it, take the property of others, I imagine that you're talking now about taxes. Yes, I am. And you believe that there should be no right by the government to tax. You believe that there should be no such thing as welfare legislation, unemployment compensation, regulation during times of stress, certain kinds of rent controls and things like that. That's right. I'm opposed to all forms of control. I am for an absolute laissez-faire, free, unregulated economy. Let me put it briefly. I'm for the separation of state and economics, just as we had separation of state and church, which led to peaceful coexistence among different religions after a period of religious wars. So the same applies to economics. If you separate the government from economics, if you do not regulate production and trade, you will have peaceful cooperation and harmony and justice among men. You are certainly enough of a political scientist to know that certain movements spring up in reaction to other movements. The labor movement, for instance, certain social welfare legislation. This did not spring full-blown from somebody's head, uh, I mean, out of a vacuum. This was a reaction to certain abuses that were going on. Isn't that true, I? Uh, not always. It actually sprang up from the same source as the abuses. If by abuses you mean the legislation, which originally had been established to help industrialists, which was already a breach of complete free enterprise. If then, in reaction, uh, labor leaders get together to initiate legislation to help labor, 
that it is only acting on the same principle, namely all parties agreeing that it is proper for the state to legislate in favor of one economic group or another. But what I'm saying is that nobody should have the right, neither employers nor employees, to use state compulsion and force. But when you for their advocate, own when you advocate completely unregulated economic life in which every man works for his own profit, you are asking, in a sense, for a, a devil take the hindmost, dog eat dog society, and one of the main reasons for the growth of government controls was to fight the robber barons, to fight laissez faire, in which the very people whom you admire the most, Ein, the, the hard headed industrialists, the successful men, uh, perverted the use of their power. Is that not true? No, it isn't. Oh. Uh, this country was made not by robber barons, but by independent men, by industrialists who succeeded on sheer ability. And who having, by of course ability, they succeeded. I mean without political force, help, or compulsion. But at the same time, there were men industrialists who did use government power as a club to help them against competitors. They uh, were the original collectivists. Today, uh, the liberals believe that that same compulsion should be used against the industrialists for the sake of workers. But the basic principle there is, should there be any compulsion? And the regulations are creating robber barons. They are creating capitalist with government help, which is the worst of all economic phenomena. Translation Maxim Tulanin Subtitles Yeher Ivanov. Hafiz Lab is a Russian libertarian party project 